Hey guys, welcome to The Market is Open. Check out our website, themarketisopen.com. Tesla's factories have been shut down for a few weeks now due to the global health crisis, but Elon Musk doesn't want to waste any time and of course wants to keep Tesla's mission intact for the long term. So he's using this as an opportunity to quietly make some upgrades to the Tesla Gigafactories and assembly plants. So in this video, I want to look at the upgrades that seem to be happening for the plants in the United States. And I also want to look at something I'm calling the Giga Casting, which I believe Tesla is planning and Sandy Monroe gave some insight in his teardown related to this. And finally, we'll look at what Tesla is up to in China with their Giga Shanghai and what upgrades are currently underway over there. But first, please hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of upcoming Tesla videos. You can also support us further on Patreon at patreon.com slash the market is open and we'll be giving a shout out to all of our patrons at the end of each video. Last year, we remember that Elon Musk and the team at Tesla were debating where they could put the new assembly lines for the Model Y factory. There was a decision between Nevada and Fremont, and in the end, Elon Musk had said that the team had basically convinced him that they could put the operations at the Fremont facility with minimal changes, especially since Model 3 production is already there and they don't want to affect that. Well, we've seen that they've already started to be able to ramp up Model Y production at the same time that they've had record Model 3 production, about 112,000 Model 3s in the last quarter of last year from the Fremont factory. So clearly Tesla engineers were right, and although Elon Musk has said in the past that Fremont is already at its maximum capacity, they have been able to shift things around to make room for Model Y production. Now that we're in an unplanned shutdown period and Tesla has already proven out that it can produce Model Ys, this gives them some confidence that they can upgrade so that when the factory comes back online, production can ramp higher and faster than ever before, especially for Model Y. And this is contrary to what Tesla short seller Jim Chanos has said, and obviously we know that he doesn't want the best for Tesla, and we know that he's wrong about this, but he said that Tesla is ramping production at exactly the wrong time, and we know that Elon's plans are a few orders of magnitude larger than Chanos' short-term plans to send the stock price down. Have a look at our Jim Chanos video from last week outlining our thoughts about what he had to say. But back in September of 2019, we can see here that Tesla applied for a permit for GA5 or General Assembly 5 at the Fremont facility, which is where the current Model Ys are being assembled. I'm guessing that this assembly line is very much like Tesla's original Model 3 assembly lines, but more refined due to Tesla constantly iterating over the design and making the car itself more manufacturable, something we'll talk about in a moment. But if they can remove certain steps from the assembly process, then the assembly line itself requires less physical space, and if they can apply that learning to Model 3 at some point as well, then they can make more room for additional assembly lines at the factory. And so it looks like in March, Tesla also applied for a permit for something called GA 4.5, which looks like it may be similar to the tent that Tesla used the GA 4 in order to quickly add more capacity for the Model 3. Back when Tesla was in production hell for Model 3, they must have realized that General Assembly was a bottleneck for the company and they weren't going to hit their weekly production estimates, something that was critical for the company to survive. If they didn't hit 5,000 cars per week or about 60,000 cars per quarter, they'd be losing a ton of money. And actually, we know that Q1 of last year in 2019, where they only delivered about 60,000 vehicles, they still lost about $4 per share of earnings. So what Tesla did was that they quickly built an industrial tent in order to be in assembly line for Model 3s. Of course, they were laughed at by the media and by short sellers saying that Tesla's building cars in tents now. However, the super simple design has some big advantages, including that it's very simple. It's one line and therefore the workers can enter from the sides and bring parts in exactly where they need to go at any point in the assembly line. Additionally, they were able to build this in about two weeks from pouring the concrete to putting up the structure and it ended up being significantly cheaper than the other assembly lines which costed $100 million. And you can see here Tesla's layout in Fremont where they have GA3, it's sort of box shaped, whereas GA4 on the left side is a straight line. So you can see that there's more surface area, or rather the perimeter along the sides is longer for GA4, which allows for easier access. Whereas if you need to bring something into the center of GA3, this could be more complicated, especially you can see the arrow here in GA3 showing that the cars are exiting from the center also. So anyways, GA4 looks like a better pipeline. And with Tesla's new GA 4.5 permit, it looks like they're going to make room for potentially another tent structure for the Model Y. It seems like if they could redo the entire Fremont layout they would, that's obviously not possible, but they're making some changes to simplify the layout of the factory. 
Also on March 25th, it looks like Tesla applied for a permit called the Tesla 5K expansion to upgrade the body and white manufacturing lines seen here at the bottom of the layout. In addition to that, Tesla has also recently applied for three more permits. One is for installing a Model Y conveyance platform, which should help boost the rate at which they can pump out Model Ys. So this is something that Tesla would have likely added anyways in the future, but they're pulling it forward since the factory is shut down anyways. Why not upgrade it at a time like this? We know that the Model 3 factory has been shut down multiple times in the past in order to perform upgrades, so Tesla is just pulling the upgrade cycle forward. And so at this time, when other automakers are cutting back on saving money, Tesla doesn't seem to need to spend that much in order to see vast increases in production. We've also heard in the past that the pain shop has been a big bottleneck for the Model 3 at least. That's one of the reasons why Tesla made the white Model 3 the standard color and charges extra for other colors. It's not so much that the color itself costs more money or anything like that, it's having to change the color that costs money. So it's done in batches, but if all the cars were the same color, of course this would be easier. But Tesla does have a limited number of colors to choose from. Anyways, it looks like Tesla may be upgrading the paint shop here to make some improvements. Finally, there's a permit for rerouting about half a mile of fire main around the general assembly line 4.5, which could be the new 10 structure which we've discussed. Also on March 31st, Tesla had applied to a permit for platform extension at module pack line location and addition of H4 room. So they may be upgrading the module and pack production lines as well. Overall, I think that Tesla is planning to come out of this shutdown even stronger than when they went in and that's going to make them highly competitive. The next thing I want to look at is from Sandy Monroe, who's been working with his team in order to tear down the Model Y and give some insight on what he's found. Of course, he sells his reports of his findings and explanations of how things work within the vehicle to other car makers and competitors. And because Tesla gives away all of their patents, then competitors can actually copy Tesla. Of course, it needs to be in good faith. If you're a car manufacturer and you copy Tesla, then you can't sue them if they copy you back. Otherwise, their massive wall of EV patents comes into effect. So this strategy that Elon Musk uses of giving away the patents actually allows for the technology to be shared and to avoid legal battles at the same time. It's smart, except you need to stay ahead in terms of innovation. So having Sandy Monroe tear apart the new Model Y is a double-edged sword. In one case, he's giving Tesla some small design improvements. It's also free advertising for Tesla because everyone is interested to see the teardown. But at the same time, competitors are looking very carefully to see what they can copy. That said, a lot of innovation secrets that Tesla has are actually at the gigafactories and manufacturing plants themselves. Because even with the final product, sometimes it can take much longer to figure out exactly how Tesla manufactured it. And then it takes time to build that architecture as well. And by that time, Tesla has already moved to the next design. Okay, so looking at this image here, Sandy calls this a mega casting. It's basically the rear underbody of the vehicle that has two aluminum castings you can see here in green and blue, and they're joined together by the orange brackets. Now, Elon Musk has talked about this in the past, and he said that the rear body castings are a step beyond. He said that in this tweet. So to me, this changes the game a little bit in a couple of ways. This part was originally made up of 70 stamped parts and then welded together by robots. Now he's replaced this with a casting that only requires four parts. Sandy Monroe says three parts. Uh, Elon has said four in the past. And you can see the fourth part appears uh, to be the stamped aluminum joining bracket, which is in orange right above the purple section. So there's four parts here instead of 70. And Elon Musk has said that once they get the big casting machine, they could bring this down to a single part, which I'm going to call the Giga Casting, doing the rear underbody in a single casting. I think Giga Casting sounds pretty cool. If you like the name, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you have a better name for it. But this has big advantages in terms of cost. Perhaps the casting machines have a high cost, but you remove a whole bunch of robots that it takes to weld 70 different parts together. It also speeds up the production line, but it would take up less space with a single stamping machine compared to some number of robots required to do the welding. Elon has also said that it reduces the NVH or noise, vibration, and harshness to have this one piece instead of 70 different pieces stuck together. It's also possible that Tesla takes this technology and applies it back to the Model 3, which they might already be doing in China since the factory is new. And speaking of China, Tesla is also upgrading their Gigafactory in China and adding a whole new area for the Model Y. 
Giga Shanghai is operational right now and it's not shut down like the rest of the world. And so Tesla is constructing Model Y assembly areas in order to bring Model Y to China. Given that they were able to bring up the entire Model 3 Giga factory in about a year since they started digging, I would expect them to have Model Y production beginning sometime later this year, which could help the China factory bring in more sales for Tesla, although the hope is that the US operations are able to come back online before that. That said, I think Tesla has enough demand in China for quite some time, like they won't be exporting Model 3s or Model Ys anytime soon, because they need to satisfy the demand in China first, which is the world's largest EV market. But at the same time, this adds more competition for other EV makers in China, which haven't really seen Tesla competition yet. I think NIO, for example, the Chinese EV manufacturer, which only sells SUV type vehicles, will actually see some real competition when the Model Y hits the markets in China. And they haven't really seen competition yet from the Model 3 since they're selling SUVs and the Model 3 is a sedan. According to China's rating system, the EPA of China, the Model Y also has over 400 miles of range for the Chinese Model Y. So I think Tesla is working as fast as they can in China to surprise the competition and really give them a run for the money, to put it nicely. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of upcoming Tesla videos. Be sure to smash the like button to help support this video. And you can also support us further on Patreon at patreon.com slash the market is open. We'd really appreciate your support there. And we're giving a shout out to our patrons at the end of each video. Thanks so much for watching.